Hey, Aubrey, I have a question for you today. All right, let's go. So are you good at telling stories? Are you a good storyteller? I think I am. I feel like this is one of my biggest skills in a social setting, right? If something funny or interesting happens, I love to like tell a story, but make it really funny or interesting, engaging, build up some suspense, exaggerate a little bit. (laughs) I love to tell a story. What about you, Lindsay? Uh, Yeah, I think I, I am not the best at it. It's not my zone of genius. Um, but yeah, I, I told a story with my meditation group on Tuesday, and I think I did a pretty good job, actually. Nice. All right, well um, done. And so, yeah. So, but there are things we can learn, and there are patterns that native speakers use when they tell stories, right, Aubrey? Yes, absolutely. Right. We got a really good question about this that we're going to share with some of the phrases we use when we're telling a story, when we want to quote someone, when we want to share what someone said or did. Yes. This really can make your stories so much more interesting and engaging. So I'm excited to share this today. Relevant and it pulls them in, right? So we have a question from Razier Azmailpour, right? Shall I read the question? Yeah. Okay. So Razier says, I would like to know more about using I told and I was like when I'm telling a story. When should I use I told and when should I use I was like? Thank you for your great podcast. Great question. Love yes, really good question. And I love that Razier is listening to other stories, hearing both of these used and trying to get, you know, their mind around how do I do this in order to grab interest, hold engagement? Because that's what makes a story good. You do not want to be the person in a group that's sort of, you know, telling a story and it's kind of boring. You see people's eyes glaze over. You want to keep it interesting. Well, storytelling is so human. It goes back to the days of evolutionary times when we're sitting around in caves around fires. And so what you notice when you get ready to tell a story is that people want to hear a good story. They want it. Absolutely. You know, that's what I noticed on Tuesday night when I started telling my story, their eyes perked up and they were looking for something to grab onto. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. Like, yeah. ooh, I'm excited. I want to mm-hmm. hear something interesting happened that you want to share. Yes. Like, yes, yes, I agree. So this is interesting. Razier asked about, I told and I was like. And first of all, like is used in this way as a quotative verb, right? Mm-hmm. This We're going to share a little more about this, but we want to make sure you didn't miss a recent guest episode with Valerie Friedland. She was highlighting the usefulness of this word like. Yes. And what episode was that, Lindsay? It was such a good one. It was nice. 1976, a great relevant episode, super interesting when we interview linguists and they give us insight on the words we use every day, right? Exactly, right? So go back and find that one. It's three benefits of like with linguist Valerie Friedland. Mm -hmm. And we're going to first dive into I was like, this quotative verb. We use it to introduce a direct quote or maybe internal dialogue, right? Do you use this when you're telling a story? Yes, I definitely do. Uh, I can't resist it. And it's so it's not really a filler word. It's not, so like in this case is not being used as a filler word. You say it's right. a quotative verb. Right? Exactly. It's a quotative mm-hmm. verb. It's a really good method when telling a story when you can't remember verbatim exactly what you said or did. And right. it doesn't matter. It almost would be strange to make it more formal and say, I said, and right. then try to quote yourself exactly. It disrupts the story. It interrupts the flow. So instead we say, I was like, and then yeah. we shared sort of generally what we said or did. Or what we thought. Usually right. for me, it's either said or did or thought. I often yes, use right? that. I was I, like, what's yeah. happening? And that was clearly just what I was thinking. <laughs> right. You didn't say that. That's a key point right there. I love that. Good point. It, exactly. It's it's can be like saying I said, but removing the implication that we're sharing exactly what was said. But just yeah. like you said, Lindsay, it might be more like this is what I thought. Mm. You know, this was just kind of my mindset. Just to add interest of like you're giving your audience all the details, everything you were thinking. They're inside your brain for this story. Yeah. Do we have any examples for our listeners here of yeah. how that so might look? Mm-hmm. More where you're quoting, you might say, I was like, let's get there early and save a table. So okay. you're quoting yourself in the past, but when you say, I was like, there's no guarantee this is exactly what you said, right? You're just sharing sort of generally what you said. 
Sure, sure. Or you could also use it to, let me just give a quick example of what it might mean when you're just kind of quoting your thoughts. Yes. Right? We were having a conversation. He was telling me about what happened and I was like, what is going on with this guy? Right? Of course, I didn't say that to the person. It's what I was exactly. thinking. All right. Right. And we share this. This probably is the number one way we use. I was like, I'm glad you're bringing this up, Lindsay, because when yeah. I'm telling a story, I do want to share my thoughts. And I can't say, I said this, or, and I wouldn't say, I thought, blah, blah, blah. No. Instead, no. we use this much more native um, structure to say, I was like, what is happening? Why am I here? <laughs> and you're yes. just exaggerating your surprise or your shock, your thoughts. Yeah. And there are also regional uh, variations of this, which we won't go into today, but regionally speaking, um, there are different things that people say, especially in older generations. Maybe that'll be for another episode, another day, Ooh. but there are, there are some things I've heard in the Boston area that are kind of creative and interesting. <laughs> all right, <laughs> but, guys, be sure to hit follow. We'll cover yeah. those in an upcoming episode. I want to know all about all of those as well. <laughs> for sure. So what about when we're recounting then what someone has said? Mm -hmm. Yes, right. And this we're less likely to talk because we don't know what they were thinking, but mm -hmm. we want to recount what someone said without being able to say exactly word for word what they said. You might say, she was like, don't tell me that. I don't want to hear any bad news. So mm -hmm. maybe not exactly word for word. You're not um, yeah. promising that when you just say she was right. like, she right. said something like this. It's like you're taking permission to go and kind of maybe rephrase what they've said, put your energy into it and sort of portray what they've said in a way yes. that you believe is authentic, if that makes sense. Right? Exactly. And we'll also use this just to share someone's reaction. You might say, she was like, what? That's crazy. And yeah. that might not be what she said at all, but she, maybe her right. face showed shock and you right. could still portray it this way in a story. Yeah. She could have said nothing. But exactly. you just, you just you read shot. the body language. Yeah. So this is really interesting. I'm surprised we haven't done an episode on this yet, but I'm so glad we're doing it today. Um, right. All right. So we're going to take a quick break and come back and talk about two others. Right, Aubrey? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. Here we go. We are back. Now, what would be the second thing we can use here? Yeah. So the second one is I told, which Razier asked about as well. Like, what's the difference? When would I use I told and when would you, I use mm -hmm. I was like? Yeah. So this one's pretty different. The verb tell is for sharing what you actually said rather right. than sort of a general, you know, statement about what you were thinking or generally what you said. It, right. It's going to be a little more specific to the actual, to what was actually said. Oh, for sure. For sure. So for example, I told her she shouldn't be late, but she didn't listen to me. So literally that is what you said. Right? We're exactly. Not, again, we're not, and we're not portraying... quoting. So mm -hmm. there's not like something word right. for word. You're actually giving the meaning of what you told someone. Yeah. It was the second example. Maybe he told his father he'd be home by midnight, yeah. right? So in a conversation, in a story, often it doesn't make sense to quote it, um, especially if it doesn't matter, right? It would be strange to be like, he said to his father, I'll be home at midnight. It yeah. doesn't make sense. It's sort of choppy right. and strange. So often, instead, we'll use told and just share generally what was said like this. Right. And the prior example, Aubrey, where he said he said to his father he'd be home, you might see that in a novel, Right. You see a lot of he said, she said in novels and books, and that's yes. great for that. But when you are paraphrasing or talking in conversation, it's much less common. We exactly. just don't, yeah, we don't have time. That's so <laughs> smart to point out that books, dialogue in books works very differently than when you're telling a story, when you're telling a conversation. It would feel strange if you're reporting yes. dialogue like, right. what, like it is when you read a book. Instead, we're trying to add interest to keep engagement. So we don't usually share word for word what happened. Instead, right. we use I was like, I told to, to keep the interest. And I was all. That's the next one. And I think you're right, Aubrey. It's about keeping the interest by reporting. Not so much I told, but uh, I was like and I was all is about feel portraying feelings, portraying exactly. your reactions to a right. thing. Right. It yeah. might be what you said sort of generally, but often it's actually your thought process, your feelings, your right. reactions. You might say, I was all, how did you misunderstand the instructions? <laughs> and this might be, you didn't actually even say that. You just thought yeah. that in your head, right? No, <laughs> Someone this, didn't understand and I was all, like, I thought right. this. <laughs> and this one is also a personality choice. I, I, I personally don't use this that much. I obviously have. Um, 
it doesn't really fall in my personality to use it as much. Do you feel like you use this much? You know who other? uses this a lot? Jessica and I talked about this on the IELTS Energy podcast. Uh -huh. We were talking about sharing a story on your part two um, answer. And uh -huh. she shared that she's much more likely to say I was all instead of I was like. I would mm. probably say I was like every now and then maybe I was all. So it yes. might be based on where she grew up or just the way her family spoke. Like you said, uh -huh. it might be your personality. It's a little more informal, I think, to say I was all. I think it's a little more informal. It's a little more emphatic, um, more exaggerated a, a little bit. Um, yes. Yeah. So if this is not in your personality, no worries. If it is, go for it, guys. Okay. But we're showing you all your options here, which is super interesting. Exactly. Uh, Let me give another example. When you're talking about someone else, the way they reacted or thought or generally what they said, you could say like, he was all, what are you doing here? And again, <laughs> because it's all or like, he may have actually said that, or he may have just had a look on his face that made you think he was thinking, what are you doing here? Right. And if you prefer, he was like, he was like, what are you doing here? Right. That would work yes. too. Perfect. Yes. And as a bonus, you will also hear native English speakers say he was all like, they'll say both. I hear this sometimes. <laughs> really? He was I've all never... like, what are you doing here? Yeah, uh, I guess yeah, I, I hear guess that I sometimes too. That. Combine both. You don't need uh -huh. to choose. That's another option. Right. This, these two, I was like, I was all very casual guys. Okay. Absolutely. So don't use it in a job interview. Don't use it in a business meeting. I think we can be pretty definitive about that. What do you think, Aubrey? Do you I agree. agree. Right. If yeah. you want to be speaking more formally, in a job interview, you might need to tell a story, something that happened at a previous job. You would, in that case, want to keep it more formally. I said yeah. to my employer and then say sort of generally what you said instead of, I was all, right, or <laughs> I or, can do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, completely. Keep these out of the business space. But there are other things. Maybe we will do one day a follow-up over on Business English. You guys should go ahead and hit follow. Search for Business English. Hit follow. But I might tend towards something like, and I thought, and I was yes. thinking, and it occurred to me, there's a lot of other things we could pull out to be more articulate. Okay? Exactly. Good point. Today is much more about casual, informal storytelling when you're wanting to grab your attention with yeah. friends, you know, even coworkers, because there are a lot of times where you're, you'll tell an interesting story at happy hour in the break room, those more informal conversations. That's when you might use it at work, but not in an interview presentation yes. meeting when you're trying to be more formal than you would. There are definitely other options for sure. Yes, yeah, so we need to know. And I think that's what our listeners want to know for connection is the formality, informality being semi-formal. Where does that fall in? Right? Exactly. But for now, Aubrey, shall we do a role play? What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. You and I are telling another friend a story about our weekend in this role play. Okay, here we go. All right. So I told Mark to meet us there at five, but I don't think he heard me. Can confirm. I heard you tell him. Yes. I was like, Mark, meet us there at five. <laughs> he must have been paying attention to something else. When he arrived at seven, I was all, why are you so late? Yes. And the servers told him the kitchen was closed. Jeez, Mark. <laughs> Get with it. Mark. <laughs> Get with the program. <laughs> so we use them all here. First, right at the top, you said, I told Mark to meet us there at five. And you do want to think about, depending on exactly what's being said, one will make sense more than another. It might be a little strange to be like, you know, I, I was all, Mark, meet us there at five when you haven't given the context yet. We don't have the background. So it makes more sense to sort of set up the story, start it by saying, you know, I told Mark to meet us there at five. Yeah, exactly. And I might add to the second line where I said, yeah, I was like, Mark, meet us there at five. If in a real conversation, I might actually add more detail or different detail because sure, I'm now Mark, meet us there at five on the dot, on like the dot emphasizing. in front of the door to the, to the restaurant. Mm. Right. So, and wait there for five minutes. I just, I just feel like I would add a little something different. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. Cause you've already said, I told, yeah. this is almost like uh, yeah. you were trying to be funny, right? Yeah. I told him, yeah, okay. can't I, I heard you. Yeah. Right. I was like, Mark, meet us there at five. Right. So, okay. There's something here. <laughs> that, there's, it would there's be more like if you're trying here. to be funny, if yeah. that's all you say. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you're right. Okay. So I see what you mean. So you're kind of making a little bit of a joke here. So we're going yeah. one level above for our listeners here in terms of fluency. If you're trying to be straightforward, 
frame it a little differently, give a little more detail, say something different, right? But if you're yes. trying to make a joke and say, Mark, what's wrong with him, right? Yeah, then this then, would work perfectly. <laughs> yes, yes, I like it. And a little bonus to point out when I just said, can confirm, this is very native and natural. It's sort of trendy right now oh. when what you're saying is, yeah, I can confirm that that is true. We won't right. use all of those words. We just shorten it and we say, can confirm. Interesting. I feel like I learned about all the language trends from you, Aubrey. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I have teenagers. No. Yeah, you have teenagers, right? I'm on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> hearing all oh. the trendy new chunks. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. All right. And then you said he must have been playing, paying attention to something else. When he arrived at seven, I was all, why are you so late? Yes. Right? And this, because I said I was all, this doesn't have to be something I even said to him. We might have just both kind of looked at him mm. like, why are you late? Maybe I looked at my watch. <laughs> I might not have actually said anything. I just thought, ugh, Mark, why are you so yeah. late? <laughs> yeah. And that's really high level for our listeners. Guys, listen very closely because again, what Aubrey said is she may not have actually said that. She may have just been thinking it. So this episode is super natural and native. Um, and as a bonus, if someone's telling you a story, a native English speaker, and they say either I was all or I was like, and you want to know if that's actually what they said or if they were thinking, sometimes you'll hear or you could say, did you actually say that? Right. And that's an interesting part of a conversation. And then they might say like, yes, I said that to him. Or they might say, no, but I thought it. Interesting. <laughs> right. Interesting idea for another episode. Aubrey, a little follow up here to today's episode, another day on All Ears English. We could do that. We could take this to the next step. Guys, hit follow on the show to make sure you don't miss an episode like that. Right? Yes. And then your last one, you said, and the servers told him the kitchen was closed. And this mm -hmm. it definitely makes more sense to use told here. It would be yeah. strange to quote the servers, right? The servers were like, hey, the kitchen is closed. You could. But yes. because this is more sort of just giving context, Text, it makes sense to say it this way. And also, I think when we use the servers, we're like, oh, you need something more interesting. You know what I mean? Right. If they it would only make sense if they had yelled at him or, right, if there right. was something, some reason that you were quoting them. The servers were like, don't you know the kitchen's closed? Um, you need, because you're trying to bring people kind of into the present a little bit or into the story more than just saying they told and so it has to be something a little more interesting than just the logistics. The right. If nothing like, really happened, right? Mm -hmm. If they were just like, oh, sorry, kitchen's closed. <laughs> That's then, not very interesting. Right, right. Exactly. Not worth quoting. Wow. This is the art of storytelling right here. Aubrey, what are, what are the takeaways for today? Yes, guys, these phrases, these chunks really do add interest to any story. Keep in mind, they're very informal, right? Mm -hmm. And you you don't want to repeat, I said this, he said this, she said that. It's boring. It doesn't pull people into the story. So use today's phrases instead. Yes. And remember, today's phrases, other than told, are not great for business. So just be careful. We may do another episode over on Business English and show you exactly how to do this, but with elevated business words, okay? Semi-formal, formal words. So we'll come yes. back to that another day. I love yeah. that idea. Definitely hit follow on Business English as well so you don't miss that episode. Yeah, it's all about pulling people into your story. Sometimes it's about pulling people into the drama. But I think as a final takeaway, keep in mind what we said at the top. People want to hear stories. It's literally embedded in our brains as human beings. We want to hear a good story. So step into that place. And if something has happened to you, tell the story. All right. Yes, absolutely. Right. That's my favorite when someone's like, oh, I have a story for you. I get so excited. <laughs> so yes, practice using these, practice telling those stories so you can have these really fun connections. Telling a story is such a great way to get deeper with someone. Maybe we, maybe someday we could build an entire course about storytelling. That could actually be kind of cool, Aubrey. Yes. I love Isn't that it? idea. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. All right. We'll hop off the mic for today, but I'll see you back on Allers English very soon. All right. Awesome. See you next right. time. Bye. Bye.